everyone from the Labrang Monastery. You might be thinking, where's the monastery? I just see a bunch of walls and doors. But let me tell you, this monastery is way bigger than just a few buildings. It's really gigantic. It feels like an entire village sprawled out across this valley. And today I'm in here to do some exploring, check out the scenery, and hopefully meet some interesting people. It's wild to me how big this place is. I feel like I've been walking for ages, but it keeps going. This place is like its own little tiny city down here. It's crazy. There are about a thousand monks living here in this monastery and they're not just in the monastery either. You can see monks out and around in the town too. When you're out walking on the street or even just looking out your hotel room window, monks are passing by all the time. This place is part of Gansu province, but it's actually a Tibetan minority prefecture, meaning that the predominant culture here is Tibetan and not Han. Buddhism is deeply ingrained in Tibetan culture, and many of these monks aren't here just for a couple of years to escape city life or become more connected with their religion. It really is their entire life. Wei and I were under the impression that pretty much all devout Buddhists were vegetarians. But on the other hand, looking at the rough terrain around here and also the really short growing season, it seems pretty difficult and impractical to be a vegetarian. It's tough to grow anything around here, so people rely pretty heavily on animal agriculture. And we saw tons of sheep and yaks on the way over here. <laughs> the deep connection that Tibetans have with Buddhism isn't just apparent in monks. It's also very noticeable in everyday people as well. All over the monastery, we saw people from the neighboring villages coming in to carry out rituals. One of which is to walk in clockwise circles around this temple. Yes, everyone was going the exact same direction. Usually when people think of monks, they envision someone whose head is completely shaven. But in this part of the world, apparently, the UV rays are just too strong up on the mountain, so it's really easy to get a sunburn on your head. So the rule is not to be shaven completely, it's just that your hair can't be longer than two fingers. People often have this perception of life in monasteries as being very quiet and peaceful, lots of meditating and silence, but life for monks here is actually really busy. It's basically like a university, but for Buddhism. Mm at first, I was hoping to meet some monks who had come here from the eastern parts of China who were like fed up with big city life and wanted to start over or some dramatic story like that. But then I realized that would actually be a lot harder than I thought because this place isn't just 
culturally different in terms of specific customs or the much deeper ties that Tibetans have to Buddhism, there's also a big language barrier. Apparently, these tiny house-looking structures are actually rooms used for exams. When exam season comes around, everybody gets their own isolated space, so no cheating. I came up here to check out these little guys up close, and once I got up here, I found that I've been swept into the crowd. Everyone is heading in the same direction, going towards some mysterious destination, so we're gonna go with them. Just on this tiny road I'm walking on, there's like a constant stream of people coming through to visit the monastery. The Buddhist culture in these Tibetan regions is just so different from anything I've ever seen before. Like, yes, there are temples in the eastern part of China, especially on mountains and stuff. Like, you'll see temples and there are some monks, but the level of devotion you see in like the everyday people, it feels very different. It's like Buddhism seems to be central to their life here, while in eastern China, for most people, it's maybe like a small part of life, if it's a part at all. Up ahead, I think I finally see where all these people are going to. It's the, the hallway of prayer wheels, literally hundreds of prayer wheels that people spin, and it represents speaking that prayer out loud. So it's like spreading blessings continuously throughout this place because there's so many people coming through pushing the prayer wheels. I'm getting in on all of the local excitement. I'm gonna go spin some prayer wheels. I was going too slow. That lady is cranking through here, so I had to get out of the way. These guys have it made. This is like the best place to set up shop in this whole town. Crowds coming through 24-7. I thought I had left the prayer wheel zone, but looks like I was wrong. It goes on and on and on. The sun is setting, so that's all for today. More videos coming soon. See you guys next time.